ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm here and I'm really uh, fortunate to interview like an uh, important up-and-coming uh, female musician here in Canada. Um, she studied with like uh, some of the biggest names in this music, uh, Christine Jensen. Uh, in fact, Christine is the, uh, the sister of uh, Ingrid Jensen, who was also like an incredible trumpet player. I did do an interview with them years ago. I'm sure like at some point it'll be out there because we have like a backlog. Or, uh, you know, Christine and Ingrid, if you're watching this, like reach out to me, we'll do another one. Um, but in terms of things like, uh, I want to talk to you about mm -hmm. like, this is your first time, like you're on the big uh, schedule for the festival, like all over the city of Montreal, like your name is part of it. Like, I remember uh, we used to hang out at the, um, the jam sessions like mm -hmm. years and years ago, like uh, I used to go to upstairs. Sometimes I even drive from like uh, Vermont or whatever and like I come just for the night and uh, it's like Al McLean and, and then there's like no other women in the room except maybe uh, Marie Fatima Rudolph. Mm -hmm. And um, here's this like female uh, tenor player. Uh, it's just like playing, playing. I'm like, oh, this is a cat. Like, uh, <laughs> and over the years, like I, 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 that's what I love about Facebook. Like, if you have um, mm -hmm. your connections on Facebook, I use it as like uh, to kind of observe what's going on and be more aware of the world. I'm always like uh, sometimes seeing your posts about Montreal, this or that, and um, we really appreciate like especially like your you're one of those people that's like um, uh, a little bit like Marie Fatima Rudolph, where like you can be in the U.S. and you can be part of the English scene, but you can also be part of the francophone mm -hmm. scene. Uh, that's a very tricky line to walk, um, because if you will talk to somebody like uh, Rachel Therrien, mm -hmm. she has the francophone scene, and it's like completely different. And um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? And like, can you talk to us about um, if you will, like the um, the scenes and the clicks, yeah, because it's important. Yeah, here actually, uh, this is my third time playing the Jazz Fest as my own artist uh, under my own name. Um, here in Montreal, there there is quite a divide between the francophone and the anglophone scenes. Um, it is there are overlap. There are people who do both, but it's also kind of ingrained in the culture of the city, where there is also the French population, the English population, and they kind of also work you know together in that way. Um, even the clubs themselves, we have the upstairs jazz bar as well as the Diazons Jazz Club, and they kind of serve. Not exclusively, but they kind of serve more those individual uh, respective populations. Here in Montreal, um, it's honestly, I tell people that in Montreal, in order to live here as a musician, it's really important that you speak either French or English and that you have a understanding or at least a functioning in the other. So if you're Francophone, that you at least have a general understanding of English. And if you're Anglophone, at least you have a general understanding of French. Um, here in the city, it is great um, to get out to you know, to really be versatile and to be able to flex that muscle. So in, a, in order to like settle in Montreal, you really have to have um, a cultural openness, a really good understanding of the needs of other artists, and be able to communicate not only through music, but also be able to really build those connections in both languages as well. So um, let's talk about another aspect mm. of that, okay? Um, so like, uh, from my personal experience in Montreal, it's a very fascinating city, but there is a period of time in the winter where it's really horrible. It's <laughs> yeah. cold and nobody goes out and it's like you could die if you um, so like how what part does it play like how much money you have and like what parents you have like if your parents can support your lifestyle to like travel to Florida in the, the, the winter or travel to travel to Europe or because like once once you have a certain amount of money and a certain amount of influence like the world is your playground and all of a sudden, Montreal is like your backyard, but you can still do a lot, you know? Yeah, I mean, here in Montreal, it's it's really about um, networking and sustaining yourself on gigs. So I don't know that many who are really, that it, it really boils down to who they're the child of or who's their mom or their dad. In the professional level, once you leave McGill, once you're out, you know, two years, three years past your bachelor's, most people are self-sustaining. Um, the whole traveling to other parts of the world, it really depends on... Um, if you are, you know, if you're able to have gigs that travel or if you're having gigs that are recurring and being able to, to really act as a full-time source of income. Um, like, talk about another aspect, because uh, this, is, this is something that, like, 
if you live in New York or mm -hmm. you're a New York musician and you've got your New York friends mm -hmm. um, and you're watching your Smalls live and you're in that New York scene, mm -hmm. you might never even think about Montreal or think that there's a scene here at all. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that because, like, I'm sure in Canada, uh, it's the same way. Like, I guess I really learned here in Montreal that the, the world is larger than just New York and it's yes. a global it's a global thing now with jazz and there's people like oh if you're not in New York then you're not really a musician like oh yeah so <laughs> that I understand that mentality um, here in Montreal again we do have several jazz clubs we do have quite a bustling uh, jazz scene around the city as well we have a very very well supported network of cultural centers so city cultural centers where the city's pumping tens of thousands of dollars into um, buying free jazz performances for the public throughout the year. So that happens, it's entirely free to go. Um, different parts of the city, so there's about, you know, there's a, a good handful of cultural centers, and they are also booking in addition to the jazz clubs, in addition to the festival that, that also has shows year round. Um, not daily, but regularly. But the thing is that we are, um, here in Quebec, we are well funded, so the government does push a lot of money into the arts. It's not the same model as New York and how New York works, and New York having so many venues. Um, of course, there are also issues with Canadians going over to the U.S. in the visa regulations for us to go play there and it not be the same for you guys to come here, but that's a whole different story. Um, but there is difficulty around visas. Again, certain people have the O-1. Otherwise, it is difficult and very costly for us to go play in the U.S. But it is something that when... That's why a lot of Canadians do go and they go and study in the U.S. to use that as a bridge to build a network and build a foundation of gigs there. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. I mean, like, um, it's sad. Like, the United States has never put emphasis on the arts. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think ever in the history of U.S. Mm -hmm. Maybe when they had some of those tours mm -hmm. um, for the State Department. But, like, um, here in Canada, it's different. There's an emphasis on the arts and money is put in. Mm -hmm. And, like, other places in the world, it's the same way. Like, even in Asia, like, China, yep. it's huge. Taiwan, they, they support. Um, I'm thinking New York, like, for my viewers, New York could, could take a lesson. Politicians who are watching, you know. But, like, here's the thing. Like, Montreal also does have its dark sides. Like, there is... Uh, underground of Montreal, like a, a mob type of thing. I'm not going to talk about that particularly on camera, but like it controls politics as well. But you know what, like that's okay. Like we appreciate the fact that whoever is funding these things here mm -hmm. uh, is appreciative of the, of the arts. It's There's no place like it in the world. Two million people come mm -hmm. to this festival. It's the largest festival in the world. And uh, you know, you come here and it's a great vibe and like you can it's almost like time traveling because you come here and all of a sudden you're in like some different vortex of how things operate and if you think on that imaginary mindset it actually can take you quite far then if you're in new york and you're playing on the streets and it sucks because you're in the subway and you're freezing and uh, if you can think in a certain positive mindset um absolutely uh you can do things um talk about this like you, mm -hmm. you you work like uh, mm -hmm. in the video game world and mm -hmm. uh, the music and all of that. Talk a, bit, a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I do work a day job as well. Um, I do work in tech. Um, for me, I um, so I, I, that helps me as well in funding my career and also living a stable lifestyle. Um, about what you said earlier about the Montreal Jazz Fest, um, the festival, and this is kind of how the funding model works in Canada, is that we have a lot of government funding. So we have Canadian Heritage that, and also the Government of Canada. We have the Canada Council for the Arts that funds more artist tours. We have Quebec, uh, Quebec's you know, Arts and Culture um, Council as well. We have the Montreal Arts Council. We also have lots of corporate sponsorships, as you see with all the, the stages that are all sponsored. And then also, I hate to say, but beer sales, merch sales, things like that also help fund the festival as well. For artists, again, we have uh, my album, uh, my most recent album, Beyond Here, was funded by the Canada Council for the Arts. Um, I applied and received a grant from them. I submitted video footage, a full grant proposal and budget. And then I've also had several other grants throughout my career for both training as well as um, developing myself. Now, because right now, again, in, in Montreal, we are post-COVID, things are reopening really quickly. Um, it is always essential to have a alternate source of income because gigs here, again, as you mentioned with winter, the, kind, the city kind of 
goes to a lull in the winter. So it's, it's always a drop and that's why here in Montreal a lot of artists do have either teaching side gigs or they work in the schools or again like myself working in tech. There are lots of different opportunities that we do in order to make sure that we have a sustainable culture here. Wow, that's all. You really put things mm -hmm. in a, a proper way for people to, to watch. Like, um, you may be doing other interviews, and I'm sure there's plenty mm -hmm. for people to to view about. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely check out, um, you know, Beth McKenna's music. Mm -hmm. um, you can find her self-produced uh, self album that was recently put out.